Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. So today we are going to learn the very first curve that we are going to do in either IG syllabus or A-level syllabus. And this curve is very useful throughout the entire economic syllabus. Okay, now for it is one of the uh, most popular questions in your multiple choice, like almost without fail, that you will definitely have a choice of questions of uh, PPC. And then secondly, in your essay questions, it is considered one of the most popular uh, questions also. So come on, let's learn. Let's understand the construction of PPC in this short video. Now, first of all, PPC stands for Production Possibility Curve as what you can see from the like, whiteboard. Okay. Now, then let's look at in economic study, the first thing we need to do is definition. The definition for PPC is, okay, basically PPC is a curve. Okay, we all know that. But then it is a curve showing all the possible combinations of two goods that Okay, you can put here either a country or a firm can produce with its available resources or level of technology. Okay, and guys, I got a short word for you to replace these available resources and the level of technology. So you can put with is available resources and level of technology, you can change this word to with is factor endowment. Factor endowment basically includes everything, your resources, your skill, your level of technology, your climate, your weather, or whatsoever. So this is the definition for PPC. Then let's look at the PPC diagram. Okay, actually, uh, no matter you put good A, good B, uh, iPad, MacBook, or whatever it is, as long as it is two different products, then it is fine. So I prefer like we put it as capital goods and consumer goods. Okay, and this is your PPC shape. Now it shows all the possible combinations of two goods that your country or your firms can produce with their resources, right? So maybe combination A, maybe combination B, maybe combination C, maybe combination D, or E, or maybe F, okay? With all your resources fully utilized, these are the combinations that you can produce. So you can produce like maybe, mm, 20 units of consumer goods with 100 units of capital goods. Or you may choose to produce 80 units of consumer goods with 50 units of capital goods. Therefore, the first thing you need to understand while you are doing your PPC is what is meant by the curve itself. The curve shows you your country's productive capacity or productive potential.
and what constrain your country's productive capacity or productive potential is your quantity of resources. How much resources you have will constrain how much, like how uh, many units of capital goods or how many units of consumer goods or how many units of combined capital goods and consumer goods that you can produce. Secondly, it is also constrained by your quality of resources. Maybe your, the skill of your labor, although you have only 10 labors, but all your labors are very productive and efficient, then you will be able to produce more of both goods. And likewise, although you have only 10 machines, but your machines is of advanced machine, highly productive machine, uh, then you can produce more of both goods as well. So that is the first thing that you need to understand while you are trying to do PPC, okay? Moving on. First thing. Second thing, we will need to uh, use PPC to understand economic problem of scarcity. So guys, scarcity, the first economic terms that we learn, uh, which is limited resources to face unlimited ones. So if you are to uh, identify uh, scarcity from the PPC diagram, your resources are limited, but you can't like produce that much of goods and services. So scarcity is shown when you place a combination outside your PPC. So beyond your PPC. So I put this combination K. So scarcity is shown by point K or combination K, okay? which is totally outside your uh, PPC, whereby you cannot like uh, produce up to this extent. You cannot produce this much of consumer goods plus this much of capital goods. Okay, it is unattainable. However, AC questions might ask you how we can consume at K in the short run or in the long run. So guys, go and find out. Second economic problem we learn is choice. So all the combinations on PPC or below PPC are your choices, okay? So, but then because we are based on one uh, simple assumption whereby we assume like uh, resources are fully utilized, then in order to uh, lead to the following problem, so we assume that you are producing on the PPC, okay? So all the combinations that you see from A all the way to F, they are considered your choices. But what are the factors uh, affecting which choices you go for? It is highly depending on government policies, Okay, if it is controlled by the government, so what government wants to produce? Let's say governments might prefer to produce more consumer goods rather than capital goods. Then government might go for choice or combination D or E or C. Okay, and if it is firms, then it is highly depending on consumer preference because consumer preference will determine firm's sales and therefore determining firm's profit, okay? Out of their combinations, out of their choices, okay? And lastly, we all learn after you make choice, it will lead to something called opportunity cost, which is the best alternative giving up. So let's say we give an example, yeah? You are now switching from combination A to combination B. So as what you can see from the diagram, when you are switching from combination A to B, combination A, you can produce 100 capital goods with 20 consumer goods. Combination B, you are producing 50 consumer goods and let's say 75 capital goods. So as you can see, 
from combination A to combination B, you increase the production of consumer goods by 30 units. How do you manage to increase the production of consumer goods by 30 units? Okay, by giving up twenty five units of capital goods. The thing that you give up in order to achieve another objective, that is your opportunity cost. Therefore, your opportunity cost of this uh, decision changing from A to B is twenty five units of capital goods foregone. So that is your opportunity cost. Okay. Okay, as mentioned just now, something that you forgone for another choice or another option, that is your opportunity cost. So the 25 units of capital goods is basically your opportunity cost. All right, so moving on guys, let's look at the third point that we need to understand from this PPC. Yeah? The third point you need to understand Combination F or combination E. When you are producing on one axis, this situation we call it specialization. Specialization meaning that firms or country, they focus or they concentrate on the production of one thing. So therefore, if you look at combination uh, F, yeah. So I put combo. Okay, combo F, you are producing only capital goods. You use all your resources to produce only capital goods. Likewise, for combo E, you use all your resources to produce consumer goods. Therefore, these two combination is said to be specialization. Combination E, you specialize in the production of consumer goods, therefore you produce zero capital goods, okay? Combination F, you produce only capital goods, therefore you produce zero consumer goods. That's how it works. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the mark scheme just doesn't seem to help, genius got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.